Oh, who drove this? See, those of you who don't know, I'm actually a singer in my other life. But that is the other life. So right now, I'm the co-host of the Roland Bubba Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show, my actual host right now is Mr. Wilbur Skipper. We're just bringing the camera in on me initially because I pay all the bills. Having said that, folks, we want to thank you again. We're shooting here live in front of a wonderful audience. Give yourselves a hand here at Everlasting Life. Everlasting Life Hospirant here in Capitol Heights, Maryland, ladies and gentlemen. I want to introduce a gentleman. I'm not going to go to his entire vitae right now because he's so dynamic that by the time I finish, it will be like next Thursday. But I just want to let you know this gentleman hails from the Washington, D.C. area. And I'm going to start at the end and let us work our way backwards. He recently uh, penned a book called From the Bus to the Bentley. And there's a reason why it was called From the Bus to the Bentley. This gentleman, although he has been doing some very dynamic things in the area of entrepreneurism, he continues to maintain his humility, continues to speak with people of all shapes, sizes, and colors, continues to make an investment into his community. And quite frankly, we're very proud of him, not just in terms of business accomplishments, because let's face it, we ain't gonna take it with us anyway. It's a legacy that we leave behind. And brother, you start to leave a heck of a legacy. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mr. Stan Richards. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Stan, why the hell from the bus to the Bentley, man? We're going to hit it. Right between the eyes from the jump. Well, why the bus? Why the bus? Well, first of all, before I get into the bus to Bentley, I just want to acknowledge you, uh, Roland, for what you're doing back in the community and just doing yes, some sir. great things. I'm just honored that you're having me on this evening. My uh, pleasure. And also honored to be here with my man Skip, who was the man back in the '80s. I remember him. I used to sneak it, sneak in the Urban Coalition. Just to see this guy, so I'm honored. That was you, wait a minute. I was the mouse of it. I was trying to run that little light skin dude out of the was, big bush. That was him with the yeah, big ass bro. That was me. Yeah, when I was the big brother, yeah. said, Get No out. shirt on. No shirt on, right? Yeah, that was you. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, that was I me. was security guard there. Wow. wow. Yeah. This would be some great time. You, got, right. you got me fired. Hey. <laughs> It all worked out. But the right? Urban Coalition was at Dunbar High School. Yes, sir. Man, that was a legendary. What, what kind of people? We saw, man, I want to say Moses Malone. Yeah, absolutely. Tell me some of the people that came through there, man, back then. Michael Brett, wow. Skip, uh, just the list goes on, you know, back in the day. NBA stars, man. Yeah, oh, yeah. Chuck Robinson, yeah. um, uh, like you said, Moses Malone. Yeah. Ernest Graham. Uh, Phil Chenier, Ernest Graham, yeah. uh, his brother. Yeah. Now, these games were free. Yeah. Absolutely. In the summertime. Yeah, but you had to get down there early. Yeah. You had to get down there like two days before the door yeah, was open, right? right? That's right. Hey, we're staying in the room only. I mean, Stan yeah. made a great point. You had to get yeah. there early. You had to get there. You had to get there early. Now I remember. Now y'all tell me if this is true. Like there were a bunch of guys who would sit in the section, and then when the young ladies came in, depending on how they looked, they would either stand up and applaud or they boo. Man, wasn't that embarrassing? <laughs> What's up with you, brothers? Man? You was one of them. I remember that first. <laughs> I don't think I was the what man. Remember the what man? All, now, now, the what man. Oh, the what man. His all oh, remember the what all, man. All those who know, tell me by, by hand clap, do you all know about the what man? <laughs> that was way back then. Oh, man, man. The what man was a guy who just ran around town, and you never knew where he was. Yeah. Sometimes you didn't know who he was. Yeah. And you'd be standing in line at McDonald's, and for no damn reason, this dude would just yell, what? <laughs> but 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 but, uh, but but to add on to that, he did something that nobody else was doing at that time. He waited for the opportune time yeah. to say what. Now he didn't just go around saying what. Yeah. He waited until everybody was just focused on something else other than him. And he would go, What? Yeah. For no damn reason. Right. Now he was a legend in DC oh, at the time. Man, sure. And his name, Vanessa, no lie, his name was the What Man. Yeah. What man. Yeah. And you always we be at the Funkadelic concert, the Go Go. We'd be at Urban Coalition. We'd be at your house eating, and this dude would just stand outside, and like everybody would be cool, chilling, nothing be going on. What outside cooking that Skip's Grill and everything, and like all the way around the corner, you just hear somebody go what, and you like what in the world, and he'd skid it, but G was on it, and then he would wave at like nobody. <laughs> the joke would yell what I'm sure, but he would wave at like nobody, and everybody would look. What's he waving at? This dude was a legend, man. Yeah. How is it that DC creates such characters as the What Man, Iceberg Slim, Chuck Brown, Back in the Day, Skip, 
and all you do is what is it about these? What's in the water that makes us act like this, Mon? Hey, great people come out of DC. I truly believe that. What makes us? How do we develop these characteristics to be great people coming out of DC? Is it the ribs? The chitlins? Is it the neighborhood? I mean, what is it? Is it the what man? But what is it that makes DC well, such I, a vibe? I just think it's the survival. You know, back then in the 80s and, and late 70s, you know, you had to get out and make something happen. And so I, I think that we all, and for me, uh, growing up in DC, you know, I didn't have anything to do but to go to Urban Coalition on Friday evenings. All day Saturday and all day Sunday. That was just like the, the, the thing to do back in the day. So I tell you, it was just, it was amazing. I got a lot of value because I used to sleep with a basketball back in the day growing up in the. Yeah, in the we, we all did. Yeah, we just thought we was going to make it, right? I mean, we, in our minds, we made it, man. Exactly. Well, Skip made it. Yeah. yeah. Slept with the basketball. Yeah. Skip doesn't believe me, but I slept with the damn basketball. Then I slept with the football. Yeah. And then, like, I realized, like, I had. Nothing else going on other than football in one hand, basketball in the other, headphones listening to Parliament Funkadella. Yeah. Something was wrong with me, man. I was yeah. touched. Yeah. And then I did the same thing in Syracuse. And then they like tried to run me out of the place. Man, was, man whatever was wrong with you is no little thing. But you ended up now. I, I'm not one of those people who talk about man, you made it out, or you made it above, or you you transcended. I'm one of those guys who are like. Wherever you come from, that's essentially who you continue to be. So you didn't just make it out of D.C. As you talked about before, you talked about from a bus to the bend. You, you were rooted in some things as you were coming through. What were two or three basic principles that you carried with you from the time you were running around, that light-skinned dude with the afro, all the way until the time you started doing the kinds of things you're doing now? What are two or three of the basic principles, man, that you tried to hold on and carry everywhere you went? Well, um, one of them was, you know, uh, character and, and, and integrity. And I remember my mother, she raised seven kids in a three-bedroom apartment over in Brentwood. We was on public assistance. And I remember my mother, <laughs> who was a prayer warrior, no father in the home, I remember her rolling, actually just chasing us around the house with the Bible. And when she catches, she make us read scripture. And I remember um, growing up really poor, and I remember, uh, you know, back then, if you're from the hood, you ate good from the first to the sixth. From the seventh to the 31st, you was on your own. So we were eating good, and on the 30th of every month, you would get excited because you know you're going to eat on the first. So I remember, you know, first of the month, we used to go down to the ice cream truck. We all got the ice cream and everything yeah. on the first of the month right. with the food stamps. Right. I remember coming back, and I remember my mother saying to me, she said, Stan, you know what? You're going to do some great things. Yep. You're not normal. She used to always tell me that. You're not normal. Yeah. You're going to do some great things, and you're going to move mountains, and you're going to change lives. Yep. She sure did. And uh, I always kept it in the back of my head. Now, I made a, a lot of uh, bumps along the way. I actually, um, back then, I was a, what you call a, man, a massive manipulator. So if you guys remember back in the 80s, if you had a big old afro and you was light-skinned and you, <laughs> you was showed in play. up. You was in play. If you showed up back then and you kept your mouth shut, they'd give you a D. Yeah. If you went to so class. So I play that game. And you, and you, and you pitch your afro. That's right. You at least got a D. And you, and you, and you kept quiet. You get a D. So I was actually pushed all the way through wow. school. I talk about this in my book. And I actually graduated from Cadoza High School. And didn't have to do no work. damn work. Didn't have to do no work. But I graduated. <laughs> it came back to get me, though, Roland. I graduated and couldn't read. Yeah. yeah. Graduated and couldn't read in 1981. Well, you know what, Stan? One of the things that um, uh, you and I were able to do off the records is talk a little bit about the book and a little bit about what you have done over the years. Now, as it relates to your, your book, From the Bus to the Bentley, what were some of the things that went into play as you were writing that book, knowing where you came from, growing up in Northeast Washington, D.C., and then looking at where you were going? And then, of course, now we're going to talk about a little later your other successes. But what were some of the things that went into writing that book 
uh, as you as you were going forward? Well, you know, uh, God is amazing, and he he told me he even gave me the title of that book, From the Bus to the Bentley, and he told me to put my whole story, and my life in that book, and that book has so much, so many messages. You know, whether you come from the inner city with no father or whether you um, grew up middle class and you had your parents, whether you've been to college, there's so many different messages in that book uh, that I talk about from the time I was, you know, 10 years old all the way up to where I'm, where I'm at now. So that, that whole journey of going, uh, graduating from high school and couldn't read, you know, getting a good government job because that's what all we inspired to do if yeah. you didn't go to college. And then, you know, uh, drug addiction, you know, I was, I was uh, 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 I beat drug addiction uh, after being strung out on cocaine from 83 to 87, by God's grace again. And then to go on to drive a Metro bus for 18 years, uh, working 80 to 100 hours a week, seven days a week, to pay for a house that I really couldn't afford. And put me right back in the ghetto where I came from, driving a bus to pay for a house. So it, that book, my book has so many different messages. <coughs> Now, you know, in closing, it talks about entrepreneurship and how, you know, moving into the 21st century, we need to be owners. You know, we need multiple strengths of income. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and before Roland jump back in, I want to just inquire about one other point. We also talk about the fact that you did not go to college. You, you did not pursue that, at least right away after you left Cardoza High School. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, the society we live in now, a lot of people kind of frown on if you stop after high school and you don't go into college. Now, I want to make this clear. I'm not saying or advocating that you should not go to college. I am for going to college. I am a proponent of going to college. But it, as it relates to your story, you were one of these people that did not go to college. And you were able to, I know Roland said he doesn't like to talk about making doubt. I kind of harp on that a little bit because I think that's instrumental, especially knowing where you've come from and all the hard times that you go through. But you were able to make it out. and. You're doing some phenomenal things. I mean, Steve Harvey, 2013 Community Award, you know, recipient, you won that in Vegas. You know, you got the multiple strength, multiple streams of income business you're doing. I mean, when you look back at that, I mean, how do you feel about the fact that you were empowered, even as we stand, we sit here, all these people from different levels, from different, different areas? Well, I, I'm just an example of, of what's possible. Uh, you know, I'm all about going to college, too. My kids go to the best schools in the country, but I'm teaching my kids to go to school, to college, to create jobs. Mm. <clears throat> Business ownership first and entrepreneurship, and then a job will be secondary to them. Mm. You know, because I believe now, and this is some of the things that we don't want to talk about, eight out of the ten kids that's graduating from college next month won't find a job. And they got student loans that they won't ever pay back. You know, so I just think that we're living in the, the 21st century and, and change is necessary in the way we think, in the way we parent, in the way we teach our kids, you know, versus what mama used to tell us, to go to school, get, a, get, get your college degree, you know, buy your nice house and car and pay your bills on time. Well, that's not working in the 21st century. Yeah, it's a different reality moving yeah. forward. Hey, folks, we're going to take a quick station break. When we come back, we're going to get into some of the specifics of what it means when you say ownership, we're going to get into the specifics of what you mean by multiple streams of income. We're going to get into, into some more specifics about what happened during that six, seven year transition mm -hmm. that you made to get to the point where you're able to even talk about these things in this way. Hey, folks, why don't you do me a favor, sit tight, roll above the grounds. We'll be back, right back at you in a few minutes. Thank you again. Thank you, for, thank you for that hearty clap. For those of you who have not had a chance to come to Everlasting Life here at Capitol Heights, Maryland, I would implore you to join us in creating, developing, enhancing a healthier lifestyle. I'm not going to sit here and say that the food that you're eating is bad for you or wrong. I'm going to let someone else tell you that. What I am going to say to you is that I've noticed that I've lost in the last couple of months a few individuals just fell off of me. Okay, so that's that's, that's a good thing. All right, so that means, so I'm working on my, how I said, I'm working on my inside, I'm working on my outside. So I, I, uh, one of my co-hosts, uh, Kishana, uh, who also doubles as a Ravens cheerleader, uh, introduced me to Secret for My Skin. And I didn't remember, but I used to go to the kiosks 
in the mall, and they gave me this dead sea salt stuff. So I've been using it as a skip. You have too. Absolutely. You know, on your face. And y'all don't notice, but like 20, 30 years ago, I was actually very ugly. Somewhat hideous even. But now, since I've been using my secret, now I'm pretty. Okay? So that's one. The second thing is I'm also working on my inside about how I eat. And I've been incorporating a lot more vegetables. I've been eating from the ground a lot more. So, it kind of goes like this. If it walks, talks, runs, swims, and has a mother and a father, I'm trying to stay away from it. <laughs> So if it grows in the ground, it's got a chance to get eaten by me. <laughs> but if it moves, I'm trying to let it go. And if I do that properly, I might actually get another 30, 40 years out of this journey if I don't get hit by his bus or his Bentley. <laughs> Having said that, again, Rolling Bubba Grimes, we're here at Everlasting Life for this episode of the Rolling Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show. I want to ask you, Brother Richards, about ownership. You said we need to become owners. When I hear that word, I know a lot of people out there, they start getting real nervous because that means I got to change. That means I risk. That means I'm scared. That means my spouse is going to quit me. That means I won't be able to keep my job. It means all of these horrible, frightening things that go with, quote, unquote, ownership. And I want to know from your perspective, why in the dickens does it scare us so? Because it's change, and we're comfortable. <clears throat> it's change. Change is, is, is hard. But let, let me just say this. I truly believe that we all are born great. We're born great. I believe that everybody in this room have a talent. That well, they I think Scripture tells us that. Yeah, I, absolutely. Pray. Absolutely. Well, I get that. But it took me 44 years to get that. Really? It took me 44 years and to get And this is after your mother chasing you around with a yes, bike. Yes, yes. It took me 44 years wow. to get that. But I believe that we all have a talent. And I believe that we, most of us ignore our talents. Okay? And one of the things that I'm doing uh, with my foundation, the richardsgroupfoundation.org, is I'm going back into the community, starting with Brentwood, where I grew up. And I'm teaching our kids to tap into that talent. I'm teaching them to see beyond their circumstances. Because I am you, you are me. I mean, just like you have your show here that's doing well, you know, how did that start? That, you know, it started with a thought. Absolutely. Okay? It started with a thought. But just think about where Roland Grimes is going to be five, ten years from now when we're looking back at this and we're, we're laughing. Yeah. Right? Like, wow, Roland, remember we were in there in, in, in everlasting life? Right. Well, I know one thing five years from now I'm going to be slimmer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I spoke it. I yeah. think it. Yeah. And not that, you know, not that I'm inordinately fat right now. It's just that I just don't think that. I, I want to wear skip suits yeah. in the future. It's going to happen. Definitely. I'm claiming it for you. And ownership, by your definition, what is ownership? Ownership is tapping into your gift, okay, and bringing it to life. Ownership is owning a business, tapping into your God-given talent, and I believe, again, that we're born to be owners, okay? Um, we, we're, we're born. Oh, okay. So ownership is not necessarily just possessing a product, a project, an entity. Ownership, in your definition, is also espousing whatever that gift those talents are and using it to manifest other great things for yourself and others around you. Absolutely. And something that no one can take away from you. Absolutely. And I believe that we're living in a time now where we have to go out and create our own wealth. But what's why, why do you believe that? What, what is it because, about because think about it. The way we were taught from the time we were, 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 were kids okay. is not working in the 21st century. My wife has two master's degrees, and she, were make, she was making about $120,000 a year with both of her master's degrees. She was GS-14 in the federal government. I was working at Metro with overtime making $120,000, I mean $110,000 a year, and we were broke on a higher level, but we thought we were free. We had a nice, beautiful home in Bowie, 
but I was always on a bus serving, in Southeast. Serving at home. Yeah, to pay for something that I couldn't afford. And then at age 44, the light came on, like, okay, what is this thing called life all about? What happens, Roland, mm. is around age 25, we all stop, dream, stop dreaming because we come out of school, we get that job, we start to create a family, Come and we start up. working to pay for the stuff that we go out and we acquire because we think that we're successful because we have a Lexus and a you know, Gucci purse and all that stuff. So we start working these jobs to pay those bills and then we stop dreaming and we stop tapping into our talents. So I'm here to say that we're living in a season now where we need to not only become owners ourselves, but we need to teach our kids to become owners and position themselves to leave wealth and leave something to the next generation and the generation now, of our Now, does ownership guarantee wealth and opportunity? No, it don't. It does, nothing's guaranteed but death and taxes, right? But guess what? I'm, I'm living proof. You know, I, I've, I've owned it before my business today. I uh, was a concert promoter for 20 years. Okay. I talk about this in my book. Nobody taught me business when I graduated from Cadoza. Again, I taught myself how to read. Long story short, when I started my entertainment business, okay, that was another gift. Right. Okay, back in 1992, nobody taught me business. So I, I was doing these big events around the D.C. metropolitan area. And at the end of the day, everybody was getting paid but, but me. You. So I did that for 14 years, hitting my head. It was all on the radio, all these big events. Some of you guys might have been to my events in D.C. at the Grand Hyatt back in the 90s. But guess what? At the end of the day, it looked good, it sounded good, but I was broke. Because nobody taught me business. You know what I'm saying? So, so that doesn't guarantee you right. anything. You, We have to... But it set certain things in motion for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Opportunity. So even yeah. though as you were hitting your head and going through this. I was figuring it out. Right. You know. And what were you figuring, Skip, before I jump sure. in with you? Sure. When you say you were figuring it out, what were you really figuring out? Did you know you were figuring it out? Or when you look back on it, you say, you know what? I was starting to figure something out. What is it that you were starting to figure out? I'm, I'm not a... I'm not a fast learner, but I'm a thorough learner. So, Damn. okay, what that means, I kept getting my head smacked kept with them bills from doing them shows, and everybody was getting paid but me. And I started figuring it out that these numbers ain't jiving. So, once you start losing, 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 you start to, okay, you know what? You need to learn how to run a business, a real legitimate business. And that's when I took a step back and I said, you know what? This is not working for me. What business, when you concert, what was your next step? What was that or those businesses? What was that business when the light came on? What was that business that you said, this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to make this work? Well, it was the industry that I'm in now, which is the direct sales industry. Direct sales. Yeah. Because what I've what I, what I seen at age 44... I was a traditional business owner, a concert promoter, but... Traditional business owner? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and what does that mean, traditional that, business that means, owner? That means I was putting the, on the these The business concerts. is working for you. Oh, no, you were working for the business. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right? So what that simply means, and, and it was my passion. It was my passion and my gift. But the, the problem was it wasn't working. You know? You can have a passion... But you, your passion may not be working today. Like when the real estate market busted a few years ago, you could be a have passion to sell real estate, you know, and that but could nothing's be moving. nothing's moving. Okay. So for me, the entertainment business, where I was putting up hundreds and thousands of dollars to do one concert, you know, I was losing money. Then the light came on that this is not working for me, mm -hmm. and I have to make a shift. So you went into direct sales. Tell me about that. Went into direct sales. Didn't have a clue about the industry. Uh, May 2006 um, was always taught. That wasn't that long ago. Yeah, that was seven years. Well, eight years in May. It'd be eight okay. years ago. Okay. 
So I was introduced to the industry, knew nothing about the industry, always looked down on the industry, always thought it was pyramid structured, and um, so Which did, everything is a pyramid. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we get that. So um, they will get it later, but yeah. we get that now. Right. We get that. So. I got involved in the industry, and I was introduced to some guys that was 10 years younger than me, and they were multi-millionaires. And I asked them, like, I'm looking at you now, and I said, can you teach me this industry? They said, yes, if you hang around long enough. So as, when I got started, I started to share the industry with family and friends. They all looked at me like mm -hmm. I got three heads, mm -hmm. and they started to run because they were not, they were ignorant to the fact they knew nothing about the industry. So I had a decision to make, do, do I quit or do I hang in there? Because what I was doing wasn't working, 44 years old. These 10 guys was multi-millionaires, they were 34 years old. And then my family and friends that was running, they were broke. So who do you follow? So I said, well, I'm gonna follow these guys over here. So I learned the industry and was able to grow an enormous, uh, organization of over 73,000 people in eight years in my industry and make millions of dollars and start now, a foundation. In this this millions of dollars that you made, it was different than the millions of dollars that you were moving with the concert business. Oh, absolutely. So you actually got to keep some of this money. Oh yeah, this is residual money. There's a difference Monthly. from residual versus linear income. There's, yeah. a, there's a huge difference. Explain. Well, residuals, if, okay, linear is, okay, I, I, I rent this room to throw a concert. I put up $1,000. I sell tickets. Okay, well, I need to sell the tickets to order to, to recoup my investment and then make a profit. Well, what if it snows? We talked about that. <laughs> what if it's Tuesday night and nobody shows up? <laughs> still have money. Still <laughs> right? have money. You can't take a collection of yeah. anything, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Residual income is you doing something one time, you know, and you're getting paid over and over and over again on that product or that service. And you're getting paid even while you're sleeping. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like utopia. And if yeah. that's the case, why aren't more people doing it? Thank well, no, let me restate that. That's wrong. Let me that was strike that question from strike that question from the record. That sounds like utopia. And if it is, are we all participating in it, whether we know it or not? Yes. We're either producing or consuming. Yeah. One end of that. Yeah. Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean that. You know, I started to jump in. Uh, we no, you, Stan, you know, this is Stan's time, but I started to answer that for Stan. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, uh, when you go back, I'm gonna take you back to when you were able to free yourself from Metro, mm -hmm. and then eventually on down the road, free your wife from her job. What was that like? Because a lot of people. Uh, as we talk about entrepreneurship and business, sometimes people, they have the talent, but they just don't hang in there long enough. Yeah. You know, they don't want to weather those storms when they come. Yeah. And they let that go. And because of that, they fail or they don't make it. But what was that like when you were able to free yourself and then free your wife? And now both of you guys are free. And you're able to do all these wonderful things with your kids and travel, yeah. give them the best of both worlds educationally and, and non education What was that like for you? It, it was it was twofold. It was it was amazing on one end because I never knew people who go to sleep when they're sleepy and wake up when they're tired of sleeping. And every day is Friday. I never knew anybody that lived like that. So, you know, on the other end, uh, it was very scary. It was the fear of the unknown because keep in mind I've been working a job ever since I was 14 years old. Now I'm 44 years old. It's 30 years I've been, I have been working two or three jobs, and now all of a sudden I'm quitting my Metro job. Now, growing up in the hood of D.C., you don't quit Metro jobs. No, absolutely not. You sure don't quit GS-14 jobs. Absolutely not. So it was, it was scary because you didn't know, you know, and, and I'll be honest with you, I pinch myself today, that, you know, is this thing, is, is it real, you know? So it was, it was very, very scary because you, you were stepping out and you were going to another level. And it's always that little bit of fear of the, of the unknown. But one thing I've learned because I talk about this in my book is positioning yourself around people that's yeah. going to take you to the next level. Absolutely. You know, so, you know, there's levels and there's always the next level. 
So as I stepped out on that faith, my heart was beating on one end, but I knew it was time for me to go to the next level because God had something bigger for me to do. Now, when you were able to free your wife, what was that conversation like prior to that happening? <laughs> I wish I had been there for that one. Uh, well, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, we, we know the <laughs> answer already, bro. My wife, again, my wife comes from corporate America. Right. So when I got started in the industry, we got started together, but she didn't really believe in the industry. And so when we started making a lot of money, you know, she started telling people she was going to leave her job and yada, yada, yada. And I told her, I said, sweetie, you're not going to be able to leave your job until you embrace this industry. Because we have another brand called Love and Business, how to build a million dollar business with your spouse. You know, so I said, listen, I need you to step up and get in this thing with me if you're going to really, you know, leave your job. Because she was an undercover agent, for real. She wasn't really out there building the business like I was. Yeah, you want her being with both feet. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, she had her nice corporate job, you know, her cube on the 13th floor, you know, one window. So she didn't really buy into the industry at first. And then she got into the industry, and now she's doing very well in the industry. And she also have a, a brand called a 21st Century Woman. And she wrote a book, too, called Faith Focus Action. Man, that's awesome. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Look, we're going to take a quick station break. We're going to come back and going to delve into a couple of things real quick. Then we're going to go into our Q&A session, and then I want you to stick around because this next segment, we need you, okay? Rolling Bubba Grimes, Rolling Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show, sit tight, we'll be right back. to Rolling Grounds and I just sports entertainment show here with my good friend uh, Mr. Stan Richards also my co-host Mr. Self-Empowerment Woodward Skipper. Let's get into some specifics in terms of this journey to create this 73,000 person thing of a jig that you are uh, in involved with. Look at that smile. Who are you involved That's right enough now? to make you smile. <laughs> wow. Look, I had a conversation with someone that I, that I love dearly recently and I said look if you start doing something six or seven years ago and there's a format that works and you continue to do that format time and month time and math doesn't lie right. if you're watching television for eight hours a day what's going to happen You can't sell it. You can't sell it. Can you? Right. Yeah. One thing you do is buy something. Right. Absolutely. Right. Okay. If you're talking to people eight hours a day, but yet you're being paid by an employer to talk to people, then your income is linear, capped, yeah. and it's linear. If you're talking to people X hours a day, and your money is not linear and it's not capped. Is there any way that you actually can fail at a direct sales industry like the one you're involved in? No, you, you, you actually can't fail. What I love about the industry, again, it's a $167 billion industry. And let me put that in perspective. That's, you know, you, if you got the movie industry, the NFL, and the music industry, all three of those industries combined is $37 billion. This industry that I'm in, Roland, it's a $167 billion industry. So you, you can't fail <laughs> so it's like, if you show up. So it's like John yeah. Dillinger, why did you rob the banks? He said, well, that's where the money's at. It's almost like time served. Right. Yeah, you gotta put in the time. Right. So you, you just gotta go do it. You, you, well, you, you have to do it, and you have to learn the well, industry. Okay, let's you have to learn the game. So you have to study. You, you, know, you, you look at yourself. You're a pretty big guy, right? And you play football, right? Right. So it don't matter how big you are. If That don't mean you're going to get a scholarship because of your size. You still got to put the work in. Right. 
Right, course. you have to study. You have to understand. You have to, you, you, you have to study the plays. You have to learn the system. And you have to learn how to build the system. And you have to grow yourself. I tell people all the time, I teach this, that your income won't grow and your team won't grow, your network won't grow until you grow. Gotcha. So you just duplicate yourself. Right. Let's go. Now, tell us a little bit about your experience with the award that you won last year, the Steve Harvey Community Award. All these people were nominated. I was one that voted for you. You didn't know this until today. Wow, thank you. But I voted for you. I didn't know who the hell you were. So but I, I saw cool. all this stuff coming on social media. Yeah. And then they started announcing the finalists. And then your name was still mentioned. I said, DC's on the map. Yeah. What was that experience like to be able to win the award, go to Las Vegas, enjoy that, meet Steve Harvey, uh, uh, Strawberry, Lady Strawberry? And that, what yeah. was that like for you? Let me, let me tell you. It was freaking amazing. It was the biggest thing that ever happened to me in life. Let me share this with you. The year before, me and my wife went out to the Hoodie Awards. And let me tell you guys, if you ever get a chance, this year is going to be in Atlanta. Go to the Hoodie Awards. And I tell you, and I'm just being honest, speaking from the heart. It made me proud to be black. To see, and I talk about that in my speech. If you see my speech on my website. Here's, it looked like it was at least 100,000 people. Wasn't no police, wasn't no fire department, wasn't no shooting. Everybody was having a great time. So me and my wife went the year before, Roland, and we were just there hanging out, and we were up in the nosebleed seats, and I was saying to my wife, I said, you know what? I said, baby, I, I would love to for somebody to nominate me for the hoodies. Wow. True story. And that was June, and when I got back in September, a good friend of mine said, you know what, Stan, I'm going to nominate you next year for the Hoodie Awards. True story. And I forgot all about it. And that May, he nominated me, and everybody started voting. Wow. And it was so crazy, because everybody started voting, and then it went viral. Yeah. It all around the country. I watched it go viral. Yeah. yeah. And it was, and, but let me tell you what was, what was so amazing. Here I was sitting in the seats in Vegas around all of the big name people, Yolanda Adams, you name them, all of them was there sitting right next to me. And then imagine someone call your name and you won and you ran against mega pastors. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I watched the list. The yeah, list. you've seen the list, oh, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and they call your name and you just got to grew up in Brentwood. Right? Graduated, couldn't read. Used to be strung out on drugs. And now you're the 2013 Steve Harvey Neighborhood Award Best Community Leader. But let me tell you, it gets better. Then, they give you a $30,000 check. Now get this, guys. You get a third, they give you a third, Ford and Steve Harvey gave my foundation, $30,000 check. Now you got $30,000 to go back in the ghetto and give it away. Exactly. Is that freaking amazing? Oh, that is freaking amazing. I'm feeling your amazement and I was being there. And let me tell you, I'm excited because next week we're launching, I'm going to send 100 seniors to the prom this year on the Richards Group Foundation. 100 graduating seniors. Okay, we're going to start the campaign next, next, next week. So uh, here's the criteria. You're going to have to at least be a C average, right? Wow. You need to be a C average, you know. You don't have to be an A. You're making it work. You're making it work. And oh, you, you can't. You can't be light skinned with an afro. <laughs> you, can't, you can't be light skinned with an afro and just get and just got by with the D. You, know? right. you, got, you got to be able to read. Yeah, you got to at least be a C average. Right, right. And um, single parents, because I'm looking to help people need that help. need the help. Absolutely. And that's what it's all about. And uh, I'm just excited. So that's what me and my wife are doing back in the, uh, uh, in the hoods of D.C. and Prince George's County. We're all about giving back to our youth, the kids that's struggling right now, the single parents that's struggling. We're all about helping them out. So it's just, it's just a beautiful thing. Well one, well, one of the things before Roland uh, jumps in, I'm jumping the gun, but I, I believe I can say this based on my relationship with Roland and, and how we do things on the Roland Brown Show. We want you to embrace, not only embrace our show, but to remember that you can always come back. 
Bring some of these kids. Let them experience the rolling ground. Bring so some of those 73,000 people let, let in the organization, see some, too. Some of what we're doing. Sure. And anything that we can do to help you as you go through this community and help folks, please use our platform. Oh, yeah, That's absolutely. We're, we're, we're there for you. Yeah. And, you know, on, on the 26th of this month, I got uh, uh, George Frazier coming in. I'm doing a networking e event. And one thing that we have to do more in the community, and, and, and uh, Skip, I, you know, I'm just thankful that you introduced me to Roland, because I'm all about connecting. Yeah. You know, I'm all about us growing together and connecting. And one of the challenges I see that's happening in our community is that we become successful and then we, we, we disconnect. We, yeah. we we disconnect. Forget. We forget. Hell, we're, we're disconnected without becoming successful. Abs absolutely. We're just yeah. disconnected yeah. for the heck of it. So I'm going to do a, a networking event, man. I want you guys man, to come. Nothing but a party, will it? Yeah. And, and I got George Frazier coming George out. George Frazier? Yeah, he's, he's, he's an awesome Oh, we guy. know. We know about George Frazier. Yeah, we know about George Frazier. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I was, I, uh, and again, this isn't the show about me, but I had an opportunity to work with the late, great Ed Moss, who played for Syracuse University. Yeah. We had an African-American newspaper in Syracuse, and we brought Tavis Smiley, we brought George Frazier to the city of Syracuse. I've never seen wow. anything like that. George Frazier was actually one of the, and the unfortunate part is that we had booked him. He came, was part of it. And then two years later, he came back as part of uh, Church University's um, Black and Hispanic Coming Back Together reunion, and Eddie Moss had passed away, and I was the one that had to tell George that Eddie had passed away, wow. and uh, and he didn't know. And uh, so, yeah, he a uh, dynamic guy. Light-skinned brother with an afro. <laughs> 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 All right, folks, look, we're going to take, uh, we're not actually going to do a station break. I'm going to cut this up when I edit. But at this moment, if you would, for me, put your hands together for Mr. Stan Richards as we open up for q and right, now this is when everybody has something on their minds, but they're too shy to ask the question because they don't want to be embarrassed. And I just need you to have some courage for me because I, there's no need for me and Skip to do this whole thing and dominate. You spent your time here on Tuesday night. Let's get at it, my brother. Mr. Richards, out of all the books that you've read, which book affected you the most that led to you? Well, the first book I ever read in my life when I was 44 years old, and, um, well, let me back up. Um, I heard Dr. Dennis Kimbrough speak. He's a professor at Clark University, and he said, readers are leaders. If you're not willing to read, prepare to fail gracefully. And I never read a book. I was 44 years old, and I never read a book. That was eight years ago. Never read a book a day in my life. Okay, and so the first book I read was uh, a guy by the name of T. Harv Ecker, The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. That was the first book I read, and then the second book I read was Do You by Russell Simmons. Yeah, so these were two very powerful books that I read because, you know, I believe that you got to learn, we have to learn how to control our money. And if you don't control your money, it goes away. True. And, you, you, and it all starts with our blueprint where we think about money. So that book really grounded me because when I first made my first million dollars, I spent it all. <laughs> True story. I was still broke even after I got off the bus. I spent the money because I, was, I wanted to good, look good for everybody so I could say that I made it. So I went and started buying all of this stuff, okay, here again. And I was used to, my blueprint was making about $240,000 a year between me and my wife's salary. So now we went from $240,000 combined to like six or $700,000. So the other $500,000 we blew because our blueprint we were used to being right here. Does that make sense? The Secrets, the Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker. Thank you. Yes. Anybody else? All right, Stan, I'll jump in. Uh, what's next for uh, uh, for you and the wife in, in terms of some future stuff? Or have you even uh, uh, thought that far out? Well, we're just working on, uh, we got three brands. Sharice's brand is the, 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 um, uh, the 21st century woman. So one of the things my wife wants to do, she wants to go back and, and just touch women. She was a very uh, introvert, 
uh, a woman eight years ago, and she used to go to work, come home, pick up, drop off, cook dinner, and then run for me, right? So, yeah. So now she's a, she's a powerful woman, and she just, she just wants to pour back into women. Yeah. You know, women that's in corporate America, women that's working a job, that, that got that gift, but they don't know how to bring it out. So that's her brand there, uh, Sharish, sharishrichards.com. And then for me, uh, my deal now, uh, uh, Skip, is to continue. I'm going to relaunch my book. We talked about that earlier. And then I'm going to go back into the community, and my goal is to pour back into the young brothers between 18 and 35 and touch that generation, okay? Uh, that's what my purpose is. And, and what I love about this whole journey over the, the last eight years is that it all started out with a, a goal. And my goal when I started in this industry was just make some extra money. So my goal led me to my passion, which is speaking. My passion led me to my purpose, which is to go back and to empower the, young, the youth and the young adults with my story and to teach them how to see beyond their circumstances. So that's what my deal is. I'm excited about it. I'm exposing a lot of young brothers to this industry. The industry is only 7% African American. So imagine what they could do Okay, I did a blog earlier today with one of the young brothers I'm working with. Imagine if I took my head and put it on his shoulders. Yeah. Okay, imagine what he could do at 25 years old. If we expose it, because one of the things that I'm finding, a lot of our kids that's coming out of college, they just, they stuck. They don't know what to do. You know, they don't want to work a nine to five. They're bored. They're so much smarter than we were at 25 years old. So they got talents that's laying in there, but they need somebody to show them how to bring that talent out. So that's what my purpose is. Now, Stan, one other question. How can, uh, for, for everybody that's here, and also those who are going to be able to view uh, this segment, how can people reach you if they want to find more about you? I know you gave a website about your wife. Can you just give them some websites, some information, so if people want to reach you, they can? Sure, sure. I, I can be reached at Stan Richards. Online.com. So StanRichardsOnline.com, uh, and I'll, you can reach me direct at 301-520-4348. Uh, and then for the couples in the room, uh, t uh, me and my wife, we also have a brand that we're working on called Love and Business: How to Build a Million Dollar Business with Your Spouse. Most couples can't work together because they don't spend enough time together. So we've spent the last eight years together building a business, so now we can actually go out and teach couples how to connect and how to grow together. Yeah. Good. Good. Hi. Uh, forgive me if you answered this, but I continue to hear you mention about the industry that you're in and the brand that you have. What is the industry? The industry that I'm in, I'm with a company called Five Links, okay? Uh, the industry is uh, telecommunications, energy, and wellness. Those are the products and services that we market uh, via website. Uh, we do commercial as well as uh, residential services. That's, what, that's, that's the name of my company. Now, the five links, if someone wants to talk to you or someone more about getting involved with that organization was the best way for them? Um, again, they can get me on uh, line at stanrichardsonline.com. Shoot me an email. My email is stan at stanrichardsonline.com. Now, you can't make money unless you either are selling something or something. Something has to move in order for there to be revenue that can be shared by individuals. So that means that it's direct sales. So this young lady just asked this question, has to go out and has to sell something. Mm -hmm. How, as an example, does she go out and sell something? Or how does she go out and go about the business of building that kind of organization? Give us just a sample or example of how that process works. Well, when you, when you get started with my company, everybody get a personal website. So what I like about this, there's no, there's no huge overhead. Okay. 
So I get a website, our company is partnered with all the major carriers for cell phones. So instead of you going into the Verizon cell phone, I mean the Verizon store get a cell phone, you can actually get it from my website. You order that phone, it's shipped to you. You pay the phone to uh, the bill to Verizon every month because we, we're we brokering the deal. We get paid a residual off of that one deal. So Verizon has this relationship set up. Absolutely. I buy the phone just like I would from Verizon store, except I buy it directly from you. Absolutely. That's it? Yep, that's it. And every month you pay that bill, I'm going to get paid anywhere from $0.50 cents to $2 off that bill. And then the same thing happens with my Pepco? Yep. My utility. BG near Pepco. Yep. Same thing happens with what else? My internet service? Internet service, Direct TV, Dish Network. And what we're really excited about right now, we're moving into wellness because people are more conscious about what they're eating. So we just launched a new coffee called the Montevita Coffee. Mm -hmm. Which is a which is a gourmet coffee and it's a healthy coffee. Now I have my I'm gonna play devil's advocate. I have my doubts. Okay. I I can't. You're right. My family's gonna do the same to me that they did with you. They're gonna look at me like, man, I'm not giving you my phone. You know? Okay. So I don't have this talent to sell. Like you said, God gives different people different talents. I don't necessarily have a talent to sell. Matter of fact, I'm actually kind of nervous and scared to do it. This is not true. I'm just giving you all an example. <laughs> I'll sell anything. I don't know what I'm doing. So let's say many people, especially African Americans who grew up dealing with stranger danger when we were seven years old, don't talk to strangers. We still ain't over that yet. Right. Okay. And then we have the, this this distrust because we got burned by somebody, something like yesterday, the day before, 17 years ago. We never forgot. Okay. Yeah. We carry we carry doom and gloom around like luggage. It's called stories. Okay. So we yeah. keep these stories, and none of them are positive, right? Yeah. So I'm going to try to come o overcome this, and I'm going to go to Ms. Sandra, and I'm going to talk to her about the services, and of course, because she's comfortable with her Pepco, and comfortable paying that bill to the people she's paying it to right now, she does not want her life disturbed by me. How is it that a guy like me can actually sit with her and get her to change something that she's already doing, but not change something that she's already doing, just do it with me? I mean, other than well, my show extraordinary good looks and charm, how, why else would she do it? Let me show you how to do that. Y'all didn't laugh when I said extraordinary good looks and charm. No. That was true. Yeah, let me let me show you how to do that. You guys ready? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to use you. Let's just say you my, 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 my brother, my brother, brother Roland. Right. So first of all, when you get started with our company, you don't have to go out and get customers every month. We teach everybody to go out and get a few customers, and then we teach you how to introduce the opportunity and teach them how to go out and get a few customers. So let me tell you, let's just say I the just got, yeah, absolutely. So let's just say I just got started with five of So I'm going to talk to Roland and Roland is my brother, right? Okay. Or well, my cousin, let's say Roland is my cousin. Now Roland, one of the reasons I got started with five links, I talk about this in the book too, was my, my brother, Tim, was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in 2005 and they gave him four months to live, okay. right? So let's just say you're my cousin. And so I got started with this business because I wanted to supplement his income because he couldn't work, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call Roland up. Roland, how you doing? I'm fine. Listen, man, how's the family and the kids and everything going? They're doing great. Listen, man. <laughs> call me dad, took all I had. <laughs> Hey, Roland, listen, I want you to do me a huge favor. Okay, what's up? I'm not asking for no money. Look oh, good, because I ain't right? got none. Right, but here's the deal. My company is partnered with Pepco. You use Pepco or BG&E? Yeah, I use Pepco. Okay, my company, Five Links, is partnered with Pepco. And if you're interested, I could get you my discount, number one. Okay. Nothing changes, but I could get you my discount. Would you be interested? Because yeah, I mean, yeah, that's does true. that make sense? Yeah. yeah. If I could save you a few dollars. Yeah, I'm not going to punch you in the nose. Yeah. Me that if I could save you a few dollars and, and it doesn't cost you anything to switch, there's no cancellation fee, would you be interested? Yeah, yeah we'll talk about it. Okay. What is how I'll get you to be my customer? And let's just say I get some pushback. Well, I don't know. You okay, know. let's do that. Man, I don't know. I, you know I'm feeling yep. squeamish about it. You know. Uh, well, here's, here's the deal. Roland, here's the deal. I just launched this business. 
and I'm very passionate about it. You know my brother Tim got, got sick, right? Right. He's the reason I'm doing this business. So I need a huge favor. I need you to be my customer. I need you to try the service for me because I'm doing this business to help Tim. Could you help me out? Damn, it's hard to say no to that. That's what I do. All right. Questions? Any questions about that? That's the truth. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't trick people to be the customers or anything like that. You tell them it's real. I tell them it's real. I, I have a question about yeah. that. Um, how long ago was this? Did your brother was sick? Uh, since he got sick in 2005. And you would still use that same, the same uh, pitch now? Oh, absolutely. I supplement his income. He don't work anymore. He's, 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 he's terminal. He has, he, has, he has cancer all through his body. He's 50 years old. Yeah. I, I, heard, I heard you say it's, uh, I don't know, it's something that's not sitting well with me with that one. Well, what, is, what could uh, it be? I don't know. I mean, I, 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 you're in my, making in money off your brother's In my mind, I mean, you said Rome is playing your hypothetical cousin, right? Yeah. Okay. What if you run out of cousins? You only need a few customers. You don't have to get hundreds of customers. No, I understand. So what I, let, I, I understand uh, what you're saying. What I'm saying is, once you run out of you know family members uh, mm -hmm. to 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 use this pitch on, what what's your recourse? How do you go out and find? Well, you got you got you got family members, you got coworkers, you got big people that you do business with. Like my cleaners is my customer. Mm -hmm. The guy that makes my suit is my customer. My barber is my customer. Anybody I spend money with must spend money with me. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So here's, the, here's what I like about the opportunity. You don't need to go out and get hundreds of customers. We teach everybody to go get 20 customers. And what I like about this is that you can be your own customer. So I was 11 customers out of my own household. Mm -hmm. So now I pay a direct TV bill. I get paid off it, and I write it off on my taxes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. Okay. You, get a, you, get a, you get a discount on your direct TV bill? Yes. And, and how, how significant is that discount? Uh, a few dollars, not much. Okay. Yeah. But you're buying it from yourself. Absolutely. It feels good. And I write it off. Mm -hmm. That's why I was telling you guys earlier, and that's what I was talking about, about business ownership. ownership. You need to advantages. own a business in a millennium because there's tax advantages to owning businesses. The tax system is set up for business owners. I pay less tax. Today than I than I paid when I was driving the bus. Absolutely. I paid thirty three percent tax. When I drove a bus. I pay thirteen percent tax now. And I'm not talking about cheating on the taxes. I talk about because now I got write offs. Yeah. Exactly. I couldn't write off my cell phone when I was driving the bus. All right. I can write it off now. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 All right. Look, uh, Stan's gonna stick around for a little bit, and you all have a chance to shake hands with him and talk to him a little bit. I'm going to. We're going to keep things moving. You're going to turn it off for a second. We're just going to come back right into it. Stan, everybody give me a favor. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.